What up, y'all? Appreciate you showing up, hanging out, listening to my dumb ass, like and subscribe. So, the ties have shifted, the tables have turned, donkey unicorns and ponies are unsure of the future of their favorite plastic shaped thing. It's not even in a box anymore. I don't know what shape that is. Um, it's closer to a not even a meta ball. Anyway. King Donkey Unicorn Colin Moriarty is coping hard because he's going through the numbers and he's 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 showing that Sony is not like losing money or they're not shrinking or that whatever. He went through the revenue and then after he did that, he went through the profit. Oh, the profit, they're making more profit year over year and all this stuff, right? And I'm like, okay. But you listen to the numbers. You listen to the numbers that they spent and you listen to the numbers that they made back in profit. And it's t- it's a t- it's 10 Fold at least, or around tenfold. I touched on it on a, on a video before. And I'm like, okay, he's a very intelligent dude. So he can make an argument that makes sense that say, oh, Sony's making profit. They keep, they're making more profit year over year, right? But when you're making, you know, I, I don't, it's less than 1% gains, 1% more profit than the year before. And it's like, okay. I mean, it's still more than you made, which is what the shareholders want to see. But when you're spending 10 times as much to get not as much profit back, I'm like, uh. but anyway, that's what Colin's doing over there. And he also said something about, I mean, look, he's a donkey unicorn. He's a pony. Let's be real. Okay. So he said, oh, it's good that Sony's only going to have one big AAA game per year. That way they can focus on that. And I'm like, that's, he's intelligent. He's playing to his base, okay? That's what he's doing. He knows that he would rather Sony be like what Microsoft has, like all those studios, all those games. He wishes that Sony put out that showcase that Microsoft put out. He wishes in his wildest dreams. He has dreams about it. Oh, so, and then he wakes up, oh, that was Microsoft's games, dang it. Sacred symbols be damned. But uh yeah. He's he's coping in his own way, intellectualizing the facts to make it seem not so doom and gloom for PlayStation. But in reality, the reality is it's twofold. It is doom and gloom for PlayStation for ponies and donkey unicorns because with Sony, I've said this time and time again Sony has created this environment where their fans expect a certain type of game a certain cadence a certain amount a certain, a certain frequency all these things they expect all these things from Sony from first party that's what gave Sony their identity that is all out the window Sony cannot afford to do that anymore and they're not doing it anymore and so, one game a year, y'all are going to be scrapping for one game a year, squinching the scrying, and then we get one, yay. And then all these other third-party games, right, that are not a surefire bet. I said this before in a video that the quality of Sony First Party will always be higher than third-party games. The third-party exclusives that they buy, that they money hat, they're not going to be what Sony does because Sony puts way more money into them. So this is the new PlayStation. I mean, like I said it before when, when Jim Ryan is, was in office and, and I was like, oh, Sony's greedy. They were raising all the prices, da, da, da. They're not what they used to be. This is the new PlayStation. I said that back then. This is the new PlayStation 2. It keeps evolving. And it's getting worse and worse for Sony, for ponies and donkey unicorns because this is exactly the opposite of what they want from Sony because they have been trained to expect something else and they're not going to get it anymore. And here's another coping pony donkey unicorn, uh, Puerto Rock. 
Puerto Rock. Uh, and and I see the the media is 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 echoing this now. I'm not going to say that selling a little over one million units of a exclusive PlayStation game is a low number, but it's a low number. And if your game is good, right? Your game is good. There's supposedly 60 million, but we're going to actually say the right number, 49 million active PlayStation 5s out there. You put out Stella Blade, a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Nowhere else is this game. You only sell a little over 1 million with 49 million consoles out there, activated consoles, only a little over 1 million. That's not a ratio that screams success to me. Regardless of the budget of the game, Porter Rock, regardless, regardless of how how many people made the game, that that is irrelevant. The, the fact is, this is a good game, right? A lot of people would buy this game and play this game, right? That's I mean, that's it's simple. You know, don't don't give me all these other all these other factors. That to justify the fact that it only sold 1 million when your player base is 49 million. That's a failure. There has to be a number, a percentage that they expect to sell. You know? Round it up to 50 million to do easy math. 1 million is, was it, 2%? That's not, I would, I would say a, a, a super success would be. Five to ten percent. Let's say that you know at least double of what they sold. Two and a half, three million. I could be like, okay, cool. Another caveat they keep spitting out. Oh, it's a new IP from a new studio. That blah 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 blah. I don't want to hear nothing. None of that. Good game sells sells units. Period. And you got forty nine million people, potential people to to buy this game. Only one million bought. Only one million bit and bought that's a problem that's a problem that has existed that is existing in the playstation 5 this generation because uh final fantasy rebirth that's supposed to be the bomb that's supposed to be oh the holy grail it's the final fantasy look at those graphics look at cloudy looks so cool right look at tifa and all the i don't even know all the names i just know it from the videos and stuff i what did that sell like two million or something that's that's like goat that's the gold game. Oh, the best game ever. It's so great that they're splitting it into 29 pieces so they can sell it to you 29 million times and make three hundred dollars off of you off of one game. Like, I mean it's not really one game because they're but you know what I'm saying. So there's something wrong. I mean, I I have already, already explained why. I understand why it's happening, why PlayStation can't sell games. Because they're not making the right games for the people who bought PlayStations. And Stella Blade is not that. Stella Blade is a hardcore pony donkey unicorn game. Let's let's divide this into a couple of camps, at least two. You got the ponies and the donkey unicorns who will buy anything that Sony puts out. You have the casuals who will buy Call of Duty, FIFA, Madden. Fortnite, you don't have to buy that, but you know what I'm saying. Overwatch, probably uh, Marvel Rivals, not Concord, all these other games. And I don't know what the the, the third is. Just, let's just show those two, okay? Those two, two camps. Most of the people who bought PlayStations are the Fortnite, the Madden, the Call of Duties. That's who. Games that Sony doesn't make. Those do- None of Sony's games are on within this camp here. But all the donkey unicorns and the ponies are over here buying Stella Blade and freaking Destruction All-Stars, capping. That's the problem. That's the ratio problem. That's the business problem that they have created themselves. And you realize the casuals don't know nothing about Last of Us 2. They're not going to play that. They're not going to get, oh, let's put the Last of Us 2 so the family can sit down and we can play this game. No, no. There is no multiplayer. So also casuals, right? Usually family. Usually many multiple players of 
said system in one household. So they might have multiple systems, but they're not playing The Last of Us 2. I mean, maybe the dad, maybe if he's less of a casual, but maybe dad and mom have three, four kids. So you figure another four people, if they're all gamers, they're not playing The Last of Us. So right there, it's four to one ratio in one household. And that's what's happening, multiplied by millions and millions all across the world. And Sony's like, why? why, why? <laughs> so dumb. You, I mean, you think about it, like Spider-Man sells so well because it's the casual title. Of course, the, the, the bad thing about Spider-Man is that, well, bad for Sony, is that Disney is raking them over the coals. They are taking so much money off of the top from Sony that it is not worth. I don't think it's worth. I mean, the the only way that Spider-Man is valuable to Sony f- fiduciarily, financially, financially, financially is they can sell consoles. Now, I'm not saying the Spider-Man console. I'm saying that having Spider-Man as an exclusive will sell consoles because they don't get a lot off of the consoles when it's like the Spider-Man console or I don't even know if it's if it's a bundle do they get 50%? I don't even I can't remember what it was, but it was some I'm like what? They get 50. They get 50% of the profit? That's a lot. That's the look, Marvel I I I always wondered why Microsoft didn't sign that deal. And hearing the numbers, I know I said this before, but hearing the numbers how much Marvel is getting off of you know their cut? I was like, that's why Mar- Microsoft said, nah, we're good. <laughs> and so they have Blade. I mean, is Blade gonna? Are they gonna have the same numbers? I don't think so because Blade isn't as a big uh, IP as Spider Man is. So they probably they probably got a better deal on Blade as far as uh, royalties and all that stuff that you know the, the cut that Marvel gets Disney. But regardless, I think. Microsoft was willing to kind of get in there into the Marvel superhero game in order to to be comparable to what Sony's offering. And and the thing about that is Spider-Man's getting tired. As far as not the IP obviously, but the the game, it's the same game but just slightly altered. And so People are starting to catch on, you know, the, the diminishing returns on something like that because it's kind of the same game. You play it, it's like, oh, yeah, that's just like the one. That's just like the one. Like, how many times are you going to recycle the same map, add a little bit of square footage, you know what I'm saying? Add a couple of miles here and there. How, you know, how long can that last? How long can you milk the same cow before the others blow dust? But bro, Blade, Blade is like, we don't know what Blade is. We've seen concept art. We've seen a little teaser trailer. And I'm like, yo, Blade could be... Blade could be something that is akin to what Blade, the movie, the Wesley Snipes, the first one, movie was to Marvel. Blade was the first Marvel. I'm a, Blade came after X-Men, right? I think. I don't even remember. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me, I can't remember which came first. X, I think Blade came after the first X-Men movie, at least. Either Or maybe Blade came first. A- anyway, it doesn't matter. Because Blade was so different. It was different from X-Men. Uh, because, obviously, it's a different character. Different uh, story. But it was still so cool. And how they did it at the time. That, you know, it kind of invigorated the, the Marvel... I don't want to say superhero... But the Marvel comic book movie um, offering and, and how people felt about it, you know, super, it was successful. So successful, they made two other movies. The second one was cool. The third one, eh, not so much. Blade Trinity. But anyway, you know, that game, we'll see. You know, I, I know Microsoft has uh, learned their lesson with uh, Redfall. So they're going to keep an eye on it. Make sure that, you know, I mean, the the studio that's making it, they know how to make games, you know. So it's not like 
they're inexperienced, but still, I think because of what happened, they're going to be like checking in on them. Like, look, we're not going to pressure you or anything, but you know, you got milestones to hit, but let's go, you know, be realistic. You know, don't, 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 don't blow smoke up the booty. Be realistic, be real. And let's get this done. You know, that's all they need to do. And I'm, I'm excited about blade. Uh, but it's 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 kind of low on the list because of this showcase. And like I said last video, Fable got me. Fable got me twisted. I'm looking. I'm like, I've never thought that I would feel kind of like this about Fable. Now I don't want to overhype myself, but I hope some of y'all went back and listened listened to the video, listened to that trailer. Like, don't even look at don't even look at it. Just put it on, listen to it. Preferably with headphones because you get a better, um, the music is more pronounced when you wear headphones. I was wearing earbuds. And, um, you know, when you don't, like if you're just listening it through through your phone, then the voices kind of overpower the music. So, but if you have headphones, you can hear the music a little more clearly. You can hear the separation, you can hear the movements and all that stuff. So, I hope y'all went and listened. And, and let me know what y'all think thought about the, the music. Um Am I crazy? I know I'm crazy, but it, it got me. It got me. Anyway, but that, you know, that showcase showcased the A, the potential, B, the bandwidth, C, the cadence, and D, the quality. And I've heard this so many times. Especially for Fable, right? I mean, Fable is just an example, but Fable is a perfect example because Playground Games, right? And I've heard this before in Playground Games when they announced, when they showed Forza Horizon. Well, that's not Playground, that was Turk 10. But they showed Forza Horizon and they showed like a, no, actually it was it was Forza Horizon 5. And they showed like, you know, it was like a stream. I mean, Forza had a stream too, but Forza Horizon particularly, it was like a stream with like a mountain and cliffs on one side and like a thing. And they were like, oh, man, look at these graphics. Like, oh, this is not in the game. It's just a cutscene and stuff. And then it, it it zoomed over and went to the gameplay. I was like, oh. Because people, it, they fooled people. And people thought it, was, it wasn't real. It's not gameplay. And it was gameplay. And that's the thing that's, that Microsoft has been doing all this generation. They did it with Forza Horizon 5. And they're doing it again with Fable. And a lot, remember when she did the arrow and shoot the dude that was up on the cliff? Gameplay. Remember when she hit the dude with the, she had an axe or something? I can't remember when she hit, she hit all kind of people. Gameplay. When she's walking into town, gameplay. When the guy, she walks up to the dude, ah, you are my favorite person or, I forget what he said. Gameplay. So much gameplay in that trailer. And it's so high quality that you see like the, the kind of, uh, bespoke trailer parts where Humphrey's talking to the camera and then you see the gameplay parts and it's like you can't there is like no kind of distinguishing like oh I could tell that's gameplay or oh I could tell that's like not in engine and that's a cutscene you can't tell it looks all good it looks like it's all you know even as far as quality and I'm like this is next gen Next Gen is starting right now. Remember when PlayStation 3 was coming out and they said Next Gen starts when PlayStation says it does or when PS3 is coming out? They said that. And they lost that generation by, by, all, by all intents and purposes. They lost that generation. Okay, You could say, oh, they sold more consoles, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about hearts and minds. They lost. And then Microsoft blew it. Anyway. That, right? Got Fable. Then you go to Perfect Dark, right? And yes, in that instance, you can tell the difference between like a cutscene and a gameplay. Although it's close, it's still close. It's still like, I mean, I don't, I don't have, I would have to see it, um, in like you know, live because I'm not sure if the cutscenes are 30 frames and then the game is 60, and then you can obviously automatically tell. Um, but that game looked really good too. And I'm like, wow, that's that's something. So this generation, you're looking at these Microsoft trailers and you're looking at these presentations and 
they are doing a lot of work. They're doing so many things that are just making these games look crazy nice. And I don't know, it's just, it's it's a trend that I, I think will continue because you see it across multiple studios and multiple games. And we're not even, these are bespoke, these are bespoke uh, engines. Well, actually, I don't know what Perfect Dark is using. I heard somebody say it was Unreal, but I'm not sure. But we all know Fable is a uh, force attack, right? And so that that's the thing about Fable that's so crazy. Because Forza, the Forza games have always been, there has not been a bad Forza game. Forza Horizon, excuse me. All of them are, are the first one is the, the worst. But they get better. Each one gets better, better, better. Now, you may like one location better, like Australia. I kind of like Australia better. But it's they're all great. And so Forza Tech is so versatile. And I'm looking at it. And I'm looking at her, like, kind of walking through the forest. And I'm like, yeah, I can believe Forza Tech can do that. Because I used to do it in Forza Horizon. Like, if you got Forza Horizon, if you got Game Pass, uh, Download Forza Horizon 5 or, or 3 or which, whichever ones that are up there. And I know they're delisting 5 or, or 4 or whatever. But anyway, download them, right? And I guess you could do 5. And oh, wow. yeah, and go into the jungle, the, the rainforest, and go into drone mode and just take off and just kind of go kind of low to the ground and just slowly kind of creep through the forest and you can see and then you will realize that oh snap forza tech is crazy and the thing about that is that the forza map the forza horizon map is pretty big right so i mean i don't know if if an albion map would be comparable to the size of forza map i mean i i guess that could work but I think level the level of detail in the forest is definitely, you know, pushed up a little bit more in Fable because that's the main thing. You're not racing on on roads going fast. You're going slow. So they have to, you know, update game on the, the foliage detail. But trust me, go into Forza Horizon 5 in the jungle and do that. And you'll see, you'll look at it and like, yo, this is a racing game? And it's like all beautiful. It looks like a forest for real. The shadows and the god ray and all kinds. Of, it's just ridiculous. And so I know Fable is going to be great. And the thing that's going to kind of tip it over for me is going to be the writing and the humor and the people they've gotten involved in the game. You know, just a uh, homeboy from the IT crowd. I said IT club I think yesterday, <laughs> last video. And, uh, Humphrey, that guy from, I forget what he's from. Actually, I've never seen him before because I don't watch um, the show that he was on. Anyway, it's great. I'm sorry. I'm rambling right now. But anyway, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what y'all think about the things that I talked about. I mean, you know, Fable. Oh, we're going to be talking about Fable. Oh, man, there's another uh, one last thing. is that There's a dude who has like only two videos on Fable. He has like 32 subscribers, I think, or something. I subbed to him. I was like, yo. He he did like a half an hour on Fable, and it was so great. He's, a, he's British, so he knows more, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll, try to re I'll try to remember to put the link in the description, but go and watch the video. I mean, like, subscribe if you want to. Like I said, he only has two videos, so I don't know if he's going to be a, a real two YouTuber like that, but it's definitely good. Uh, definitely watch that video because it, it was super entertaining and it's super knowledgeable and stuff so check that out and uh yeah man hit me up in the comments and uh let me know what y'all think and uh i'll talk to y'all on the next one